Hey people, we're looking at the Ryzen 7 version of the ThinkPad X13. If you want a ThinkPad to be thin and light as possible and has to have a Ryzen, then this is pretty much it. Really similar to the T14 and the T14S, except that it's probably more like a T14S Mini. It's a 13.3 inch screen, so it's a little bit smaller than the T14S, smaller keyboard as well. Overall, the chassis is more compact. A year ago, if you said that you can get a core laptop in the 13.3 inch body, it would been pretty amazing, but now I think here it is. Let's take a look. Aligned on the rear right corner, the X13 on top has a noticeably more compact chassis than the T14 on the middle and the T480 on the base. An advantage of a 13.3 inch chassis. The X13 on the top is a little bit thinner than the T14 on the middle. Not carbon thin, but functionally thin. And of course, the only thing you seem to be missing out on is a micro SD card. The AMD Ryzen Powered X13 lacks a Thunderbolt 3 port. Hopefully it's a feature that can be added in the future. If you want to use external graphics or more advanced docking, this might be a bottleneck. But for many users, a USB-C port will do nicely. And of course this laptop uses USB-C charger as well. The HDMI port is a 2.0 spec. At the back, really not much difference other than the SIMS card tray placement. The design is so consistent, it's like looking at monoculture quad. On the X13, we don't have a full-size Ethernet port. However, the other ports are thankfully retained. The heat vent does exhaust some hot air to your right-hand side, so if you're using a mouse, it might be helpful to get a wireless one so you can move it around more easily. Removing the base cover in order to access the user serviceable parts is fairly straightforward. Simply follow Lenovo's hardware service menu. The X13 shares the same motherboard with the larger T14S. Some changes have been made to accommodate it into a smaller chassis. The 48 watt hour battery is marginally smaller, still respectable. On the side, this heatsink and also this ribbon cable are slightly less long. The speaker is actually a little bit larger than the T14 and T14S. I would expect the speaker performance to be functional rather than comparable with the latest entertainment laptops. We did load the 4G, but the cable seems to be there. And thankfully, the Wi-Fi card itself is not soldered onto the motherboard, so it can be changed if needed. I expect most people opening the base cover will be using it to change the M2 SSD. Overall, this is more compact design, so it's not expected to run at as fast a speed as the T14S. That said, the performance seems to be impressive, especially considering 13.3 inch body. Okay, let's um, quickly recap. For this video, we'll mostly focus on the AMD and AMD comparison. In comparison to the T-Series laptop, the X13 is only marginally thinner and lighter. Up to 32 gig of non-upgradable RAM is going to be plenty for most users. Does also mean that you have to choose it upfront. At the moment, the 32 gig spec seems to be quite limited in availability, so we don't really know if it's limited to the Ryzen 7 machines. The keyboard is a little bit smaller than the other T-series laptops, but it's a swap of the keyboard. Other than the 10 to 15% performance gap to the other T-series laptops, it's a very similar laptop. The benefits and drawbacks of Ryzen seems to be more or less there, similar to the other T-series laptops. Personally, I think of the X13 as a smaller T14S, in the sense that it retains most of the really good aspects of the T14S, the portability, the tread and tested chassis, and not too massive a bezel. It's not much lighter than the T14S, it's just a little bit more compact. If we look from the top, PVC shutter, it's good action, it's not too firm. Assuming that the laptop has a similar bezel size and a smaller screen, it would mean that the bezel is a little bit more noticeable. This wouldn't be a problem if you're coming from an older ThinkPad, but if you're coming from an XPS 13, especially the latest generation, it will be very noticeable. And on the inside, we don't have an upwards firing speaker, but what we do have is Adobe Audio speaker system. Enabling it just helps you to get the most of the built-in speaker. It's not the most loud speaker. It would really be nice to have more bass in the future, but I think this is what we're given. We'll talk about the keyboard later. The key press is okay. The travel could be a little bit deeper, but we're moving to a thinner and lighter design. The trackpad is very good. Friction is a little bit higher than I'd have liked. For a laptop with such a superb keyboard, you would wish the trackpad were bigger. But generally speaking, to make the trackpad bigger, there is usually design concessions. For instance, would that go or would something else go that you really value? It's a hard one to say. We've aligned the X13 on top of the T14 and on the right hand side, there's a very noticeable difference in the size of the keyboard. As you can see, this is a Lenovo full-size desktop keyboard. It's the same lens as the T14, as you can see. Similar on the side. Putting the full-size keyboard now on the X13, you can see some obvious sideways difference. This is a deficit versus a full-size keyboard. The difference will be there on the side as well. 
It's not an issue if the X13 will be your daily machine and you don't intend to use any other keyboard or laptops. But if you do switch between a full-size keyboard and the X13 constantly back and forth, then this difference will be quite noticeable. If that's the case, then the T14 and T14S might be a more attractive machine for you. The ThinkPad keyboards are generally very well regarded. They give you good feedback. The travel is decent. Additionally, the feedback I really quite like. You press it on and you just expect something. There's some laptops which give you a very spongy feel. This is not one of those. This is a very good keyboard, but what I would say is the T14 is an excellent one. So what we're thinking is, on the heavier prices, you feel the laptop's noise resonating onto the base, onto the desk. Not really sure I like that. Whereas on the T14, the laptop absorbs the impact and it doesn't resonate down to the desk. So, you know, it's still very good for the day to day. The isolated key alignment issue strikes again. If you can hear, it's catching onto the right edge of the keyboard. I'm not giving it any direction. I'm just pressing it and somehow it's catching on the edge. Also a lesser extent with this key catching on the edge, but it's mostly that. If you remember the F9, F10, F11, these keys are new. This is probably likely to be still a new keyboard they're producing. With PC manufacturers, especially very early on in batch, there could be a QA process which um, gets enhanced over time as more of the laptop gets produced. So it could be we're just a little bit unlucky. The last T14 which we've had for the early review had a similar issue where the key was catching on the edge. And of course, this issue is covered under Lenovo's warranty. It's a little bit embarrassing for us to even mention this because we know it's covered. Still, it's not something you'd rather see on a new laptop, if that makes sense. We just hope that the QA process improves over time. So by the time you see the laptop yourself, it wouldn't have the same issue. Okay, so let's have a play with webcam on board. So we're being lit by two of the 15 watts LED lights. So it's considered fairly well lit. For the small sensor on the laptop to work properly, it really has to be quite well lit. What we'll do is we'll try to switch off one of the light. And before we do that, as we can see, this detail is not being properly resolved. And you can see the shadow on the shirt is turning into a yellowish hue. It's not being resolved properly. And of course, the lockdown hair is a mess. No, sorry, that, that's just me. Okay, so you will see a lot less detail. And um, yeah, the details is still not resolved. Oddly, the shirt coloring is a little bit better. So it could be the sensor it doesn't react as well um, to some of the artificial lights. But, you know, it's the quality will start to drop. And when we kill both of the lights, um, the footage will sort of go to black. We'll just try that. Okay, as you can see, no more footage for now. But if I point it at something slightly dark, then it picks up some noisy sing signal. Um, it's like a watching ghost movie. Okay, if we just go back to normal. Okay, so, you know, the webcam, it works. Um, if you want better quality, obviously get a Logitech, something like uh, the C920 or C922. Those are great for streaming and I think it's just generally worthwhile to have one of those if you do lots of streaming stuff. As for the display options, we have four options here. If we just focus on the Full HD and anything above for now, so the non-touch version Full HD, I think that's the one that's going to be super popular because it's 300 nits, it's decent brightness, works well indoor, it's matte screen. The touch screen option is an interesting one. Um, normally it might be sensible to steer away from the touch screen option unless it has glass coating so it's a little bit harder to leave bright marks. I mean having said that this is a more compact chassis so having that gesture input might be you know genuinely very helpful for some people. And of course you have the 500 nits privacy panel. Just be a little bit conscious that maybe only get this panel if you really 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 need the privacy side of it because even if you switch off the privacy function the viewing angle is still not quite as good as a standard IPS panel. Also the 500 nits is not really 500 nits if you switch on the previous filter and also generally it seems not quite as bright as 500 nits of course in the uk here there's a tm panel option i'm at a little bit of a loss on the one hand you have a really premium portable powerful up to eight core laptop on the other hand tn option it just seems a little bit strange but obviously some people who buy this in bulk may not need a high quality screen with good viewing angle, decent resolution in 2020, you know. Generally, the screen quality is decent. 
I'm not sure how much you can see, but I think the viewing angle is also very decent as per the IPS panel technology. I think on the indoor, you're not going to be able to notice much difference. It's when you take it outdoors, um, the 300 nits might not be the brightest panel outdoors, but I think for the office use, it's perfectly adequate. The color seems to be quite even. If we nitpick slightly, there will be some marks on the edge. I think that's typical of the IPS panels. If you need a good quality display, usually trying to do it on an external screen is by far more cost effective. And as you can see, the color seems to be very good, not oversaturated, but good enough. For the lighter everyday workload, both the heat and the noise are very workable. For the medium and more heavy workload, the heat and noise become more noticeable. We're just running a medium battery test. So 5 News tab, refreshing every 20 seconds. YouTube 1080p playback continuous. Additionally, Spotify. Speaker is off. No backlight keypad. So as you can see, 25% of the battery will drain in just over one hour. That gives it around 4-5 or five hours running time. The temperature when it's running this benchmark is fairly respectable. It's a usual heat signature, but less noticeable. When I put my hand here, it's not too hot to touch. And similar story on the base. It's uh, You can see some of the heat, but I think that's to be expected. It's not excessively hot. It's only when you start to stress the processor more heavily and running the graphics at the same time when the laptop becomes noticeably more heated. As we can see from the heaven benchmark, the right edge tends to be the hottest, followed by the top edge and the center of the keyboard. These are usually the worst case scenario in terms of the heat because you're stressing both the CPU and the GPU. Whereas for the base cover, the center near the rear and also the right edge, more noticeably hot. It usually gets to about 45 degrees when you're running both the CPU and the graphics. This is cooler than the T14 and the T14S. It may be that Lenovo is intending for the X13 to run less hot because it's a more compact machine. Just to summarize performance, when we're thinking of the CPU-only workload, it's actually really impressive, especially in the multi-threaded workloads. The R20 result, I think, is not a surprise. Not quite as fast as the T14 and T14S, but I think that's to be expected. It's a more compact system with less ability to cool. What we did notice is uh, some more variation in the results in comparison to the larger, again, to do with the chassis and its thermal performance. If this were a bigger laptop, dissipating the heat would probably be easier. In the R15 result, it's respectable again, as you can see here. Geekbench 5, when you move on to the battery from AC, there's some performance degradation. And interestingly, we did put the T14 next to it, and the T14 came up about 15% faster. Obviously, a small caveat is that the T14 had double the RAM, also dual channel. Geekbench tends to be more sensitive to the bandwidth rather than size of RAM, so that shouldn't have made much difference. Interesting thing is when we look at the benchmark from the Ryzen 5 on the T14, it's roughly in the same ballpark as the X13 with Ryzen 7. You are paying a premium effectively for this chassis in terms of performance as well as price. When you move on to mixed workloads so CPU plus GPU, we'd expect to see more gaps in comparison to the larger systems. For instance, in the heaven benchmark faster on the T14, when you're working on more heavy multi-threaded stuff on battery, it's a good thing that AMD seems to be more efficient in the sense that an absolute maximum power usage is capped. That usage limit is lower than the Intel. Where the Intel products seem to shine is when you run less heavy stuff, so the lighter workload, everyday stuff, the battery is better optimized on the Intel model. If there's one thing we can say is that there's absolutely no shame in getting the Ryzen 5 version of this laptop. The reason we say this is, yes, obviously, if you put a Ryzen 7 into it, it's going to be faster. But if you put a Ryzen 7 into it, it's also not going to be as fast as how fast a Ryzen 7 should be in a better cooled laptop that's bigger, for instance, the T14 or something even bigger. In effect, you'll be multiplying your performance by a factor of 0.8 or 0.85, but at the same time, you're still paying the premium price for a premium chassis. The compelling options here might be the Ryzen 5 on the T14 as an alternative, or even the Ryzen 7 if you want even more performance. So just to summarize, so compare the X395, the predecessor, to the X13 with Ryzen. 
I would think the Ryzen 4000 series processor is really the star of the show. Not much else has changed. The AX Wi-Fi, things like a few new keyboard shortcuts. So, I mean, those are small changes, but I think what this Ryzen change has really allowed the prospective customers to do is worry less about managing limitations and more about getting on with their day-to-day -day life. That's a really enriching and enabling product. I think that's the more exciting part. Obviously, it's still quite early on in the AMD's transformation of the laptop market. So part of that is contingent on their ability to supply enough chips. You can already see some supply side limitations for things ease over time. If you can wait, it might be useful to see what the Intel Tiger Lake product announcement in September might bring. It might be that they give you a more specific shipping date, whether it's Q4 or something similar. It's looking like from Intel side, it's more powerful version of Ice Lake processor derivative and more powerful graphics. Conversely speaking, for AMD, the future is ready here. Um, terms and condition apply, provided you don't need the Thunderbolt 3. Anyway, hope this helps. Any question, just drop it in the comment section. Thanks.